This is WNEP's Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. Join us for streamside adventures. Days in the field with new and old friends. It's all about making memories and following traditions. And exciting hunting experiences with interesting people. We've captured the beauty and majesty of the great outdoors. And it's all next on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. Hello everyone and welcome to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. I'm Don Jacobs in the Pennsylvania Outdoor Life cabin. And I have to remind you, this is the third week now in January where we are celebrating 40 years of Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. We've pretty much talked about the first 10 or 12 years, Stan Soa, Joe Zone, Jane Adonisio. We've sort of talked about what it was like back then to do television. But joining me right now is one of the original co-hosts, Mike Stevens. Now, Mike, yeah. you weren't one of the first on the set, but quickly started doing stories for Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. Yeah, we, um, I, was, I was doing On the Pennsylvania Road at the time, mm -hmm. and it seemed to fit you know, since I was out there anyway, I might as well shoot something for outdoor life. Right, right. And so we started to do that whenever possible. Sure, sure. And, you know, having fun at the same time, of course. Can you believe it was 40 years ago when the show started? No, I can't. I, when you told me about it, I, I still hold that same position. I don't believe it. Right. I don't believe it. Right, right, right. 40 years is a long time to do one show, you know? It really is. So let me again bring you back to 32 years ago. I was asked to be the producer, along with producer Larry Lavelle, and I'm sitting there thinking, so how do I do this? Mm -hmm. So I set up a, this is the first time a, a story I chose to produce. You were going to be the reporter. I chose a canoeing story down the Delaware. And I remember saying to myself, as you're over there laughing and doing <laughs> interviews, I'm thinking, this can't be real. I, I'm not getting paid to do this. And I assigned myself <laughs> to go with Mike Stevens on the Delaware River. Yeah, it was terrible, wasn't it? It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that, that I never felt like I went and worked a day in my career. You know, it was just... Let's sit down and shoot the breeze for a while. Sure. And, and it became good TV. Yeah, whatever. So as we go through the first 10 years, 8 years, I find stories of, of yours that simply captivate me. Um, you are one of the first people I've ever seen do a story on a Pennsylvania falconer. Uh -huh. Do you remember that story? I do, yep. yep. Now you had to sit back and say, really? I'm doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was, um, it was quite impressive because I had never... I had never imagined to be following a guy as he went hunting with, with a falcon. And here we are going through the woods and he manages to get something too, I know, I you know? know. It, was, it was just great to, to, to watch him do it. And he, I think his closing line was something like, ah, here's supper, right? you know, and that was it. That was the end. But you know what? I'm sure there are falconers out there, but let's face it, times have changed. Absolutely. Right? Yep. I mean, things that we used to look at, everything from opening days of the trout season, bombarded with people at every creek and every lake. Now, not so much. But we've had a great time on a lot of those opening days of trout seasons, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was great to watch uh, fathers and sons. Uh, and there were, there were moms in there, too, but predominantly I saw uh, fathers and sons. It was great to have a dad bring out his kid and teach him the basics of fishing. And maybe the kid didn't catch anything. So what? I never caught anything either. Right. But, but to have this kid out there with his dad, that bonding going on, the excitement of everybody around him catching fish, right. that was something that I marveled at every year. Another really interesting story I found, uh, Mike, you and Stan sort of went camping along the Susquehanna River with the family, and uh, they were all set up with tents. You tell the story about how great and how simple life is because of this. Again, not too many people enjoyed that day like you and Stan. Do you remember that story? Uh, yeah, vaguely, to be honest with you, okay. because it was a long time ago. But Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, those were the kinds of things we sampled, you know, we just... But we went out and did it. And I don't think, for the most part, I don't think anybody planned these things. You know, we just went out and somebody set up a tent. Here's your bunk. Go ahead. Right, <laughs> you right, know? right. And that was it. 
um, we never planned them to speak of. Well, when you did that story, that brought me home. And as I sit and look at all these files and all these files, I'm at the point now where we're starting to look at stories we did like on the three cookbooks that we produced oh, yeah. in the 90s, yeah. right? I remember cooking with you <clears throat> to help promote promote that. I yeah. did stories, Stan Soa did stories, Ken Hunter. Those three cookbooks, people still use them. Yeah. Do you remember the recipe you put into the cookbook? Uh, no, I don't. I hope it was a good one. It was a good one. <laughs> it was a good one. But the bottom line is that now those cookbooks are archived at the Scranton Public Library. So you can go and get that cookbook through the archives at the public library. So how about the expos we started through? Oh, oh. Remember that? Yeah, I remember the first one. 91, right? 91. Yep. Uh, we did not know, if you recall, we did not know what to expect. Yes. We thought, well, we'll get some people together and they'll have a little, they'll have their booths set up. At and, the Columbia Mall. Yeah, at the Columbia Mall and work, uh, work their show and, you know, whatever comes along, comes along. Right. Well, I, it was, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. When people started to come in the door, the line to see us stand and be. Yeah was like 50, 100 feet long. And I thought, yeah. boy, what did we do here? Yep. <laughs> you know? And I was the producer of that expo. Yeah. State police came up to me and said, guess what? We're not gonna let anybody else in until we, some people leave, because you're way above the fire code. Oh my God. Right, so that was 91. By 93, Pennsylvania Outdoor Life was celebrating their 10th anniversary. Do you remember the birthday cake we cut? Yeah, yeah. 400 pounds, and we <laughs> gave away another 300 pounds of sheet cake. That was an amazing getup, wasn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. It was it, it was a chance to meet people up front. We and we dealt with a lot of interesting people over time, you and me and Stan and the other guys who were here. Uh, we dealt with a lot of interesting people on that level. But here with the expos was a chance for us to meet our viewers, right? To meet the people who actually tuned in once a week to watch the show, yeah. And you know what can you say about that other than boy, it was a great time. So everything from the cookbooks to the expos, you were always my right hand man on that. But the thing that I really will always remember and remember because of you being on that trip with Stan Soa was our trip to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, oh, yeah. Yellowstone, Grand Tetons, America, uh, Safari Club International gave Pennsylvania Outdoor Life seven teachers roles in the American Wilderness Leadership School. So we had a contest, picked our seven people, and we went out there. Mike, Stan, myself, producer Doug Engel, what a trip. Do you remember oh. going through Yellowstone? Oh yeah, yeah. And <laughs> one of the things I remember, two of the things, that big, that big uh, geyser that oh, yeah. comes up. Um, and the guy who was taking us out on a tour, he was one of the, um, he was the local guide, mm -hmm. uh, volunteer I think. He was, yep. Um, and he said, <laughs> First, he tells us this story about grizzly bears that attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he says, when we're going up the hill, he said, make sure you make noise. And I, <laughs> tell me, me, I ask why. Yeah, <laughs> scare says, off the big yeah. bears. <laughs> he, says, he says, well, you don't want to, you don't want to have the bear surprised. Right, See, yeah, I This is it, that. you yeah. got to make a lot of noise so that when you're coming up the hill, yeah. they know you're there and they accept it. Those seven teachers, they freak, uh, They were called the Pennsylvania Seven by the end of the trip. Yeah. We did fishing together. We did land management together. We saw all kinds of bison and oh, everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope they brought home <clears throat> what they learned and passed it along, like my memories have been mm -hmm. passed along to other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Grand Tetons were, that to me was amazing. Yeah. I, I can't think of a different word, a better right. word for it offhand, but... It was just one of those things that you look at in awe, yeah. in wonder. And if you're old enough to remember that, I hope you remember it as fondly as we do. That's for sure. Now, we're indeed going to take a short break. When we come back, Mike's going to stick around, and we're going to do a little bit of fishing, Mike Stevens style. <laughs>